We're back, traders, with Martha Stokes, co-founder and CEO of Technotrader. Martha, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing very well. Thank you, Joel. Uh, could you give us a little bit of your education and background in the markets? Well, I'm a chartered market technician, so that's just the opposite of Dennis. He's a CFA. The chartered market technician studies technical analysis, cycle analysis, relational analysis to determine how the stocks are going to perform and what's going on in the stock market. Okay, so uh, a little bit different view on the markets here. Uh, Boy, we've had a volatile day in the market yesterday and uh, looks for some uh, continued follow through here in today's session. Uh, some disappointing GDP numbers. I mean, you can't dispute we've been in this long term uptrend here. Uh, what do you what are you thinking about this correction? Oh, I just think it's uh, a profit-taking mode. Uh, I study the market in a different way using a technical quantitative analysis of all of the different uh, stocks, all 6,200 of them, wow. and instead of just looking at the index charts. And what I see is just the dark pools, as they normally do when things get a little overly speculative, have pulled back, and they're just waiting to see what's going on. They were in bu buying in bottoming stocks. And so they're pausing. HFTs are uh, switching to a selling mode, so they're doing uh, selling activity ahead of retail news, which causes retail traders to panic and sell, and smaller funds are using VWAP, so they're, they're selling down <clears throat> because the HFTs are, quite, are having a lot of volume to the downside. So what you have is a lot of variable activity going on based on a trigger of profit-taking because we technical traders were saying, okay, this is an over overextended situation in the technical patterns. Let's take some profits. That triggers the high-frequency traders. That triggers uh, the smaller funds following volume at time rather than time and, and price. And so you have this little correction going on, which is necessary. We're way overextended technically on your indexes, not necessarily your underlyings. Okay, so what do you use to identify you know, the, the bias of the high-frequency traders? The high-frequency traders have six different types of strategies they use. One of their favorites is retail news. They jump in ahead with retail news. They used to buy it ahead of time from the uh, news feeds, but that has slowed down considerably. So they're not getting news quite as, quite as fast or in advance of the retail news actually hitting the retail news websites, but they love that strategy. They also... Uh, trade technical patterns using MACD and stochastics because they also know that that's a great area because all of the retail crowd use those indicators. So they have special algorithms written just to trade against uh, the MACDs and that type of thing. And they, that's how come so many retail traders are getting whacked. And some smaller funds are also using those strategies. They also like uh, arbitrage, and they will use that frequency. They'll get in and out, so arbitrage is really tough these days. I'm sure you know that. Yep. And uh, they also are trying to find the dark pools, the giant institutions who buy slowly, incrementally, in a controlled bracketed order using TWAP orders instead of VWAP. So their price, their price points are very specific. They do not move price. That's something everybody needs to write down because everybody thinks – that because you have 100,000 or 500,000 share lot trucking through, that that's going to move price. Since they're on the dark pools and the twilight pools, they're hidden. People, the active traders in, during the day and HFTs can't find them. They're able to buy at a price that is not better than what retail might get, but is within their price zone and what they want to buy and not necessarily high-frequency traders like they used to rushing in ahead of them and uh, pushing price ahead of them, which they do not want. So there's all this different underlying activity going on. The indexes are only a very small portion of the market. Uh, it's a very visible market to the retail traders, which I think are probably your predominant viewers, maybe smaller funds also. And so that's what you see. That's kind of the surface of what's going on in the market, like the top of the ocean. But underneath, there's all this other activity going on that a lot of uh, people need to learn about so they understand why the markets move the way they do. So do you think that high-frequency trading, I mean, there's obviously, you know, predatory tactics that, you know, oh, sure. are not great for the markets. But, I mean, overall, do you, is your opinion that uh, HFT adds liquidity to the market and it's, uh, you know, a necessary evil in order to, uh, for the market? <laughs> evil is never necessary. Um 
I think that HFTs are not going to disappear entirely. I think that they will eventually be regulated because there's been so much news about them. Uh, the average person is up in arms and feels that the market is not safe. And so the Congress is going to do some sort of regulation to satisfy their constituents. Uh, this is the norm. Whether those regulations actually help or harm, we'll have to see. We have a lot of regulations to pattern out and test and see if they're going to work or not. We've been, uh, the big banks, the sell side institutions have been heavily uh, regulated, which is good, but also are those regulations going to hold up? Are they the right regulations? So again, with HFTs, uh, pushing them into marker maker mode is what, what a lot of people are saying should occur. Getco has been there for some time, and that's the largest HFT or was. But will they? Will that help or harm? Is a good question. Uh, regulations need to be done with care and foresight. Foresight with people who understand the markets, not with someone who hears about the markets and then makes a regulation because he's a congressman. Sorry, but sorry, congressman, but uh, they need a lot more information when they regulate. I think regulations are good. I think HFTs will not disappear entirely. Whether or not their liquidity is valuable or not is a good question. Market makers, and I have uh, a good friend who is a market maker, uh, was questioning, and this is something I wrote about, uh, questioning the speed of execution versus the liquidity issues that can occur, especially in the downside market. Market makers need to know the why before they make their decision on how they make that market. And if they don't understand the why, if the why isn't coming through the information fast enough and the speed of execution by HFTs is faster than the information can be given to the market makers, the market makers will pause for a period of time to determine what is going on. That's what happened with some of the flash crashes. So just saying that they're market makers is not necessarily going to help the issue as much as understanding how speed and liquidity work in tandem on the a millisecond scale and on the macrosecond scale and how the uh, SEC's new pauses will function when we really have a full-blown correction that scares people. Uh, so Michael Lewis made his uh, his statement, uh, I believe a couple of months ago, that uh, the market is rigged. What, what's, your, what's your take on that statement? I think he's naive. I think his viewpoint is very limited. I think he has limited experience and that he doesn't fully understand. You, as I, I wrote to you yesterday, there are nine market participant groups. Each have a different venue that they trade on. Each have a different speed of execution. They have different order flow. They have different resources for their analytics, different types of analytics they're using, the sophistication and experience and expertise of the people creating in those environments. You have a very complex environment and you have to understand that there's a lot of dynamics going on. Everybody says quantitative easing is the only thing that's causing the stock market to go up, but in the last year we've had nothing but tapering. And so still the market goes up. So clearly they don't understand what is the supply and demand aspects of the market, the different nine market participant groups, how they buy, why they buy, where they're buying, and the capital that's moving into the markets where it's coming from and how long that will sustain. So you can, you can isolate one little market participant group like the high-frequency traders and make them the evil that everybody hates. That's all well and good, but that doesn't give you the broad understanding you really need to know to trade these more complex market structure that we have today and the automation. You really need to understand who is doing what, when and where, so that when you look at a stock chart or look at the fundamentals of a company, you can understand what's going on rather than just uh, just trying to do it off the cuff with very limited information. I find that a lot of people just don't know what they need to know, and it's not that hard to learn, but they're not given the opportunity to really understand the market. They have a very limited viewpoint. Uh, and you mentioned also that when you you know you broke down your studies, being the uh, chartered market technician, that not only in the charts, but you you also tried to and correct me if I'm wrong here. It's you know psychoanalysis. I mean, looking at the behaviors of the markets. Uh, how you know how do you how do you quantify that data, and uh, how did you acquire that skill? There's a lot. Well, my theory for my CMT was uh, won by my um, thesis on cycle theories. 
Um, so I took cycle theories and went beyond what uh, Dewey had originally done, which was to prove that cycles did exist in the stock market, and that was his sole purpose. And so I took it to the level of, okay, there's, st- there's standard deviations, but there's also extreme deviations and that can disrupt cycles and cause the cycles to alter and change sometimes temporarily, sometimes permanently. So that's where I got the cycle theory. I studied uh, all of the Charles Dewey theories that he had written in the early years and went on through and then added my theories from my analytics beyond that using a detrending de- uh, indicator to detrend the markets to prove the theory and how the deviations and where they occur and why they affect the cycle so much. So I have that. I also use a lot of quantitative analysis, which is in my ability to analyze all of the market, uh, how much momentum is in the market, where the bias is in the market, uh, where are the dark pools, where are they actively trading, are they actively trading? Because right now with automated orders, dark pools can be in or they can just sit there and wait. And with the automated orders, the automated orders are paused at certain levels or certain uh, volume activity, and then they trigger again once things settle down. Dark pools are most prevalent on very quiet market days for the indexes. Uh, If HFT activity is really high, the dark pools tend to be very quiet. That type of analytics. Where are the HFTs? What are they doing? Are they doing news? Are they doing arbitrage? Are they doing hedging? Are they doing... Uh, are they using technicals and trading technically? You can see that in the charts with the quantitative analysis. So there's a lot of variables that I'm studying. I'm also studying, okay, the impact of corporations. Corporations are the supply side of the market. They control the number of outstanding shares for their corporation. They can split their shares like Apple split their shares and have more outstanding shares, which opens up the supply side for more people to buy it and it's at a lower price, so more people will, very good idea, or they can buy it back. And we have an unusually high number of corporations buying back their shares of stock. That shrinks the supply side, so ergo the price is going to move up because there are fewer shares out there for people to buy if they wish to buy it. We have a lot of sovereign and foreign funds moving into our S&P 500. That's what the last big move up has been. Uh, foreign and sovereign funds buying into the S&P 500, dumping bonds, T-bills, because they can see that the stocks actually are a better investment. So there's a lot of dynamics going on in the market, and what I try to do is study the whole depth and breadth of it uh, with my seven quantitative scans that study every aspect of what's going on as much as I can. And I do a lot of fundamental research. I probably read 20 or 30 research articles a week. Wow. So I'm just on top of it all the time. Okay. And just to uh, end things up here, they uh, introducing that pilot program here, talking, you know, experimenting with nickels. Do you, do you think that's going to be good or bad for the market? Uh, are you talking about the small small uh, yep. small caps? Yep. Oh yeah, the small caps. The small caps. The only I the only objection I have to the SEC uh, testing. I love that they forward test. I love that they test live in the market actively. I have two things that bother me, and they bothered me in 2005 when I sat in the audience and listened to the SEC explain that they were going to get rid of the uptick rule and why and how they were going to test that. Uh, there are two things that I that I worry about. One is that the n- number of, of small caps in the test is not broad enough. And secondly, we're in a strong bull market, and they're testing it in a strong bull market. What happens when we go into an intermediate correction or a bear market? Good and point. so we don't know that. So that's that's the thing that concerns me most is that we have a one-sided testing program going on that is like, very limited, and when you limit the number of, of tested uh, items in the list like stocks, then you, all, you shrink that and you can get some false positives or false negatives. Okay, thank you. All right, we've had Martha Stokes on, co-founder and CEO of Tech the Trader, uh, giving her outlook on the markets and market structure. Martha, thanks uh, for coming on the show today. We'd certainly like to have you on again. Thank you. You're welcome.